So I'm here at the Exotic Wedding Planning Conference in Barcelona, which is a conference for new, aspiring and experienced wedding planners who are attending from all over Europe. I'm lucky enough to be a part of a panel of amazing speakers and I get to interview all of the speakers as well. And right now I'm sat here with Matthew Oliver. Matthew, thank you for joining me. Now I thought it would be nice to start off by getting you to tell us who you are, what you do and where you've come from. Hello everyone. Hi, um, so I'm Matthew Oliver um, and we plan Destination International Weddings all over the world. We're based in the UK, just outside Bath and Bradford and Avon, where we've got our offices and stuff. Um, I've been doing it for 10 years, experienced. I was actually started my career in Cyprus and I you know, decided to come back to the UK. I wanted to give something to my clients, like, you know, a, a journey and experience because it's all about them. You know, we have to remember in this industry that they're the ones getting married it's their special day. We can't take control. Obviously, we take control, but yeah. we look after them and we nature them to like what, what they want. And I have met some amazing people in my 10 years, and I'm at a point where I'm actually really comfortable where I am. International weddings are great because you're not in the same place one twice. You know, you're all going over the place and you work with different venues, different suppliers, and, and you're working with different clients from all over the world. Thank you, Matthew. That was a lovely introduction. And it must be nice to get to that point of, you know, more or less 10 years where you are feeling comfortable with who you are, what you do and what you offer. Now, when I was doing my research on you, um, I obviously went through your website and I loved the fact that you've got this little bit um, called About Me. And I especially loved the way you described yourself as Wedding Wikipedia. What a great little phrase. Tell me about that. So it was just a way of getting to know everyone like you know people to, to get to know me um i feel like being in the industry for 10 years i've you know gone through everything you know i've seen everything i've got i've had mistakes happen i've had you know issues with clients i've had issues with suppliers so but i now know what i want and like what i've done and what i've achieved so i can give that knowledge to people that want to be wedding planners that are contacting wedding planners venue suppliers everyone i feel like i've got like a little you know wikipedia knowledge but in my own sense i'm not like you know what i say is what it has to be you know it's what I've learned and the mistakes that I've took, which has been a great thing. I think learning mistakes and having mistakes is a great thing for business and for growth of your company. So, you know, a little of a fun phrase for people to get to know me, I think. Well, I liked it. I thought it was a, a really good little catchphrase that you've got going on there and it just caught my attention. So I couldn't not mention it. No. Now, planning is not the only service that you offer your clients. You also offer a styling and design service as well. And I was wondering if you could tell me about what you think are some of the most important traits from an event designer because you know, it is different from a planner um, and the designer side has some very um, different skills that are required. From entering this industry I was naive I had no idea what a wedding planner was when I started because I was literally just thrown into it so I've had the um, the practicality um, the professional the organizer you know person in me and it, you know that's work but I feel you know being a wedding planner you've got to take on loads of traits you know you've got to take in all of it and give your clients all your knowledge on every single thing because you are dealing with lots of different things at once creativity however is my favorite part because you um are creating something that's based on that client so we yeah. we have to get to know that client perfectly like you know ins and outs get to know their favorite colors like their favorite tv series you know what their dog name is and yeah. you know if they've got children everything because it's about them the personality like a wedding is built on the personality of the client not built built on me not built on the suppliers not built on the venues it's about the client so creativity is really important and we've got quite a i don't know i feel like i've got that 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 touch that eye now for detail and what works but we've also got to remember this is the venue so we've got to also work with the venue and the colors and the design of that venue what works a lot of clients have their ideas to start with but we always say look you need to wait till you've got the venue until we can start working with the style and the design but we work with them closely like i said before it's a journey and it's a beautiful journey that we go on and we create a design based on them and also working with the venue and it all works and it's great that's a very important point you made there um, about the venue um, and also the fact that it's about the couple 
you know, I train wedding planners. It's what I do, um, designers and stylists. And what we have to really get through to them is what they like is not necessarily going to be what the client likes. And it always has to be about the client and their personalities. So that's a great point and one we certainly talk about quite a lot at the Academy. So something else I wanted to talk to you about was inspiration. Where do you go for inspiration for your weddings and events? Um, you know, it's something that some people struggle with and I find that I don't always get my inspiration in the industry. I actually get more inspiration outside of the industry. So I was interested to know where you went for yours. Great question, actually. Um, I don't know. It depends on each of the clients, obviously, and what they're looking for. If it's a difficult brief, um, we have to look at different resources. And like you said, we don't go just to the wedding industry. We look at the design industry, like the creativity industry, the home industry is quite a big one because home industry is basically like colors of furniture and like color you know wallpaper carpets and stuff and sometimes that's really good to get that and pinterest has always been a good um point of call to start with um <laughs> um it you don't want to go too much involved with pinterest because it's a minefield at times so when you use it correctly it's actually really good but we only use that to start with and then we create boards from that but we, you know we we get inspiration from peers from vendors from like you know the home home in different industries basically um and i feel that's really good because you've got you actually got to listen and and work with the design of what you're trying to create it's it's, it is difficult because it could be a really difficult brief and you can't just go to the wedding industry um you've got to like be clever and and i think that really is good for the client to see and then obviously with the process like i said before like the journey they see how it started and then how it how it evolves well that i mean that makes perfect sense um can you give us an example of you've you've sort of mentioned there several times how it depends on how um, complex the brief is so is there one that you can give us an example of where you've really had to sort of pull your resources and think quite outside of the box and go to different industries to find your inspiration in order to create that spectacular event that your client's looking for it's a difficult question again um it there's there's been several that has been quite different and difficult, but not because of the design, more so of the client yeah. and railing them in a little bit, you know, because you don't want to go too overboard. Even if it is a great budget you've got, you've got to be careful because too much can be too much and look too awful, yeah. and you want to make sure that's right. So a lot of the t like so one for instance we did an Amani. Um, wedding and it was a royal family and it was supposed to be an Amman and it was she wanted like literally Amman like she wanted Middle Eastern sort of themed wedding and you know, and she wanted to do it outside in the Shangri-La in Muscat and it the, the design didn't work because um, it was outside and she wanted a marquee and she you, what we had to do was I had to create something based on that area like I said before and it was sort of like a natural area there was the sea there was the palm trees there was the grass and obviously the rock so we I decided and I just said to her look we don't want this the, the typical Middle Eastern wedding I think we should go more natural and create something that is based on this space like you know hire in wooden chairs you know like you know let's go more natural and go crazy with like sort of the floor decorations but using more foliage and you know more adding some color but like keep making it really natural but classic natural and then from that she listened and she loved it and it, and it worked really really well um, but actually the wedding was eventually in mandarin oriental in london so it didn't actually happen in a month <laughs> yeah. long, okay. long story but yeah difficult well, I mean, that's a really good example there of actually using your surroundings. I know that the wedding didn't end up happening where it was supposed to happen, but at the end of the day, if it had, you managed to deal with a client who wanted one thing and take them onto something that was totally different, but by using your surroundings as the inspiration. Yeah. Um, so that's a good lesson to be learned there. One thing I wanted to ask you about was your favorite place to design. I mean, I have a pr favorite place to go to to think when I'm trying to think about course material, um, how to market my company, what new things to do. And I think everybody has their favorite place to be when they're being creative. So what's your favorite place? Where do you go when you need to design something? Really good question. And in starting my own business, I didn't really have a place. I was working from home for four years. And I think a lot of you 
will be doing that as well to start with and you you, you can't you know but it's you know it's a good starting point and you learn and that's that is the key um we got a studio this year um just in Bradford Avon and we created it in a very sort of traditional classy um environment and it's really good and it's really helped with the of, for my for me as a as a as a business and entrepreneur to like cr- create creating marvelous events but i always go on a run i make sure i go on a run like at least three times a week five miles with my dog who's my inspiration in life and i absolutely adore him and that actually really helps because i actually run without music as well and I run through fields and cow fields and you know canal paths and stuff and it's really inspiring it clears my head to yeah. it at the end of the day and i that is probably the most pla- the, pe- the the perfect place for me to actually gather knowledge and gather what i want to do go back write everything down and from what i learned from my, my run and it's really really good and it, i totally recommend doing it if you can <laughs> maybe get a dog definitely get a dog <laughs> Well, I don't run, but I bike ride. So I do do a similar thing to you. And you're right. It clears your head. It makes you feel better. And you can focus. All of a sudden, you've just got this clear focus because there is nothing else to think about. Um, Car journeys can be similar. When you're just driving, um, you've got that time to just think. Yeah, without any distraction. So now I completely go along with that. So you've been in business now for nearly 10 years. Um, That's, you know, no mean feat. I know that everybody in business, me included, we've all faced challenges um, and we've all had triumphs too. And I've asked this question to all the speakers. Tell me about your biggest challenge and your biggest triumph. Biggest challenge, the the bride didn't have her dress um, in time for the actual day before the wedding. Um, It was quite disastrous. And I don't get involved with that side of things. Well, obviously, I helped at that time, but obviously everything apparently was my fault um, when it didn't show up and it wasn't right. So we obviously had to like improvise. We had to go to like, you know, local boutiques and get something. And we did, you know, and it was it was a triumph. But obviously on the day, I was very worried because the way she talked to me the day before. Um, But we managed and we got through it and it was a great event. And she actually apologized, which was really good. But it just shows that we can't always do everything. You know, there's always one little thing. Thing, even if it wasn't our responsibility it's still our fault and you just have to be very calm about it and just take it take it because obviously at the end of the day it's their wedding biggest um what was the biggest triumph was the one i was talking about before the Amman one yeah. it changed from obviously being an Amman in the shangri-la to going to london and it changed three months before the actual wedding that was supposed to happen in the shangri-la they wanted Mandarin Oriental. There was an event on the day they actually really wanted. They only wanted that day. We couldn't change that day. So the Mandarin Oriental brought out the event that happened and g- gave it to my to my clients. But unfortunately, there was a death in the family. So we had to, and apparently we, we, they have to, they can't celebrate anything for 100 days. So we had to bring it, take it back again to January this year. So that potentially was three different invites we had to send out. <laughs> working with Imani clients as well who are lovely but it was very very challenging but it was really good for me actually because I was working with a really really big budget working with a different sort of culture and working with like luxury like Mandarin Oriental in London for instance and it really helped me to like know what I wanted so this year has been based basically changed everything in like my branding in how I represent myself as a wedding planner because that's what I want to be I want to you know work with you know the, the higher budgets and the luxury market because it was absolutely wonderful what we created and i had a great team you know i didn't want to work with the the the, 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 the traditional wedding suppliers in london i wanted to bring my team in because i trusted them and i knew that yeah. and it worked absolutely wonderful and it was a great event well that sounds like that was a really defining moment for you Um, that whole event obviously has changed the face of your business and helped you really to take your business to the next level now. Um, As you say, it made you realize what it was you wanted, uh, where you wanted to take your business, and that you could obviously offer those services um, and rise to that sort of occasion because that was a lot of pressure. As you say, just the fact that it changed locations um, twice, got the date changed three times, and you were working with a different culture. Um, and that is the nature of wedding planning. Being able to adapt and be adaptable has to be one of the biggest key personality traits that you need, apart from all the other obvious ones. So my final question to you, Matthew, would be about those people coming into the industry. Um, 
as a wedding planner, I'm sure like most wedding planners, you're approached daily by people who want to come into the industry. And obviously that's what we do. We train them um, when they get to that point where they realize they're serious um, and they want this as a new career. So what would your advice be to those wanting to come into the wedding industry as a wedding planner? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you have to stay positive. You've got to, because when you start, you don't know the direction you're going to go in. No. You're on your own. You know, you, yes, you've got your partner, but they don't know what wedding planning is. Um, oh, yeah, they might do. But you've got to really stay on top of the positivity. You know, try and stay away from negativity. Um, you don't want to be put down. And there's going to be so many um, walls are going to climb over when creating your own business. And obviously, I'd love to help you, but everyone's different. But I think you just have to do it on your own because you learn so, 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 so much. Be positive. Have a great website. Keep updating the website time and time again. I think rebranding every two years is healthy. And because you're it's a creative industry you know the creative industry always changes like four years ago everyone loved teacups and vintage things now uh, and bunting like but now we absolutely hate it so yeah. you, you c there's so much change in the industry so and that means you've got to change you've got to be up to date with it but based on you you've got to remember you've got an image and you've got to create an image based on like for instance i've got bow ties i get i have you know have crazy suits and i've got like the stupid mankle thing going on but it's people know that and people know that and people like that so you've got to create an image for your brand and for people in the industry um but like i said positivity is the main thing there's also great um like alliances you know out there that you can join and having the support from people that are in the industry as well is it's, it's helped me massively because like, like I said I was on my own I started in in the house and now I've expanded and it's going crazy but I had support you know even also when I started I um worked with suppliers that were brand new as well but we've all grown together and that is also a great thing so try and find like a little network of people that you like and who work, who are sort of similar to your brand and but you can be friends with and you know that really helps you need you need people to talk to you know i wouldn't be here today with it if it wasn't for other wedding planners or my family and suppliers and some of the suppliers now that have actually grown with me are my best friends and yeah. they understand you because you're in the same industry but i keep saying it positivity 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 don't be negative because if you're negative about it you're not going to get very far you've got to pma positive mental attitude and that's my advice for everyone joining the industry sorry i ramble and talk too much not at all i couldn't agree with you more it is a lonely industry um a job as a wedding planner you are on your own a lot of the time and as you say it's so important to build that team around you that you trust that you get on with that has the same vision as you because together you create the event, not one person. So that's hugely important. Um, and I agree from the branding perspective as well. You have to know who you are, what it is that you want, and there's got to be something unique that's just you. And as you said, everybody knows who you are. Everybody knows the look that you've got, but that's consistent throughout your branding. And I do believe you're about to launch a new website, or have you just launched your new website? Very soon. Yeah. So it's as you say, I do agree. We change our website at the Academy roughly every two to three years. Um, and as you say, websites themselves in design change. And um, because we seem to be in a fashion forward industry, we need to make sure that what we're representing as part of our brand also represents that change as well. If we have an old website, we're going to be deemed as old fashioned. So I think that's very important. Matthew, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here chatting with me. Thank you so much for taking time thank at the you. conference to talk to us and the viewers. Um, and I enjoyed chatting to you. So thank you. No, thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Don't forget to head to our YouTube channel to check out all of the rest of the interviews that we've done with the speakers here at the Exotic Wedding Planning Conference in Barcelona.